Hello, I'm Sue Owen, and I'm from Destiny. It's a privilege to be with you just now to share a few things. I'm in the middle of doing a wee series called Lessons in Faith, and today my story is about one of our sons who, as a very tiny baby, became quite sick. You know, because God loved us and gave Jesus to be our healer, we chose to pray believing for this when our boys were small and we had a serious health challenge. At that point, we'd four boys under the ages of eight. So you can imagine it was a challenge. It was a struggle, but God came through in an amazing way. And I want, hopefully, to help you to negotiate maybe things that you're facing, maybe things that you're challenging, uh, that are challenging you at the moment. When our baby was born, it was Christmas time, 25th of November, in fact. So Christmas week. He'd been healthy, he was fine. His name is Gareth. He was the fourth boy that we have at home. And I recall one day thinking, oh, he's uh, just growing perfectly well. He's coming on with all the feeding. The other boys were really in peace. And we'd our grandma staying, the, the boy's grandma was staying. And she'd gone out for a walk that day, about the 29th of December, I think it was. When she came home, she didn't look very well. And in fact, she couldn't finish her dinner and she went to bed. And within a few hours, we had a serious crisis on our hands because grandma became really sick, so much so that we needed the doctor. And very quickly, I realized after the doctor had left us with just one antibiotic tablet, I knew immediately this is not enough. We need her to be in hospital, to be safe, to be covered and to be cared for. So we phoned for the ambulance. They whisked her away. I was back at home feeding the baby, looking after the other three boys. By now we were in the middle of the night. I remember feeling sad that she needed to go to hospital, but I knew as a nurse that she needed so much more care than, than I could give her now that I was a new mom. I used to be a nurse. And we visited and we looked after her as best as we could from a distance, really. I suppose that's the way you would describe the situation. The doctors thought we'd lost her. But very soon after all of this, maybe even the morning after, the doctor came to the house not knowing she'd gone into hospital. And we explained the situation and now he knew the GP was up to speed with the situation. But the baby now, Gareth, four weeks old, coughed a little bit in his carry cot. The doctor looked across and said, what's happening, and came over. And without so much as any questions, really, just said, he needs to go on antibiotics. And it seemed and turned out to be the fact that the doctors were querying meningitis with grandma. So therefore, I believe he must have wanted to cover Gareth for any infection and any serious problem. So Gareth started as a four-week-old baby on antibiotics. Now, within a week or maybe 10 days, we realized something dramatic had happened because we could hear him making noises from upstairs, wondered what was the matter. He wasn't crying, but he was definitely making a few noises and Andrew brought him out. And when he had Gareth in his arms, he realized the baby was bleeding from everywhere. He was just bleeding. It was such a shock, a terrible shock, an awful picture to see. We wondered what had happened. We, we, we couldn't make any sense of the picture that we were looking at. And his skin had seriously thrown <laughs> one major reaction. It threw us into turmoil. We were not only now needing to visit grandma at hospital, but we were needing to find answers for the baby. He wasn't admitted into hospital. We kept him clean, took him to the doctors showed him to the doctors and we realized that there was some allergic reaction going on. And at that point, I knew very little about that. I didn't know much about um, cosmetics and chemicals. I didn't know much about clothing and all the detergents that you would use. I didn't really not know much about the dust in the house and all of that, but I soon learned, I had to learn. I needed to double check everything. I needed to uh, go through the house with a fine tooth comb and try and clear out anything that might be a trigger for Gareth's problem. The doctor said he'd got ectopic eczema and this set us on a course of bandages and appointments and creams 
and hospital visits and doctor scrutiny for a few months. And in fact, if I'd not been a nurse, I would have been at the hospital with him every day, which could have been just disastrous, really, for a, a young family like ours with all the other things that needed to just continue. And we were pioneering the church all at the same time. I remember going to the hospital three mornings a week so that they could check him and rebandage the rest of the week. I took care of him at home. I recall also that the doctors would try creams and that didn't sit too well with myself. I, I wasn't happy with just, well, let's have a go at this and let's have a go at that. And I wasn't um, sure on the percentages and the, the strengths of these steroid creams that were going onto the baby's skin. And it really created a lot of questions, not just in keeping him comfortable, but long-term questions. You know, what were we maybe doing now that could result in really serious consequences later. And it was, as you would imagine, very much a prayer walk, uh, a life of faith, asking God for answers. It was very much, uh, let's get into this and find out what we can do. In this instance, God said, do research. I recall sharing a story with you before about the loss of our first baby, where God said quite clearly, do not research. That's not gonna help. But in Gareth's story, in this new season that we were in, he said, go and search and go and find out and then weigh it. It became a bit of a jungle. I, I remember being quite overwhelmed by the information that was coming to me. I remember being daunted and sometimes very sad at the weight of this and trying to make good choices. I remember finding it extremely tiring. We, we did only sleep maybe two hours in 24. Our GP noticed that and told us that. And we'd often be walking into the garden with him just to cool him down because the house was too hot. I remember going into superstores or supermarket, in, indoor stores, and realizing within like 45 seconds I had to leave. Uh, I remember trying things that maybe I could bathe him in, even water, and you would know within a minute, less than a minute, if he was comfortable or not, because he would just start to, to writhe and wriggle. It was a challenge, you know, trying to keep his skin not only uh, itch-free, but safe, because he would scratch himself. And I ha had to bath him with socks on his feet because he would run his toenail up the back of his leg and create quite a saw there, quite a, a cut. So there were so many different things I'd be concerned about. He would only wear cotton, we would stay in fresh air, We'd keep him away from animals, any kind of skins or anything we had in the house, like a jacket or something over the sofa. That, well, that had to go. And there were so many new disciplines that came in on upon, onto us and in on upon the boys because they were quite young and they would just want to carry on playing or doing the usual things, but we had to be quite sensitive and protective of Gareth at the time. The boys were really gracious during that season. We went to a, a place where we thought, Lord, I'm not sure, we're not sure about this hospital picture. And we were concerned about the ongoing story that would unfold. And we wanted God to be in on it, not just running ahead of ourselves, if I could put it that way. We went to a camp, I recall a prophecy coming. And someone said, the Lord's gonna heal this boy. And Andrew found that extremely easy to receive. He proclaimed it in church, in fact, Gareth is healed. And I remember changing the baby's nappy under the table, so much so that others couldn't see what was going on. I didn't want them to see sometimes the blood-stained clothing. It was quite tough. But all the while I knew God is, is faithful. He's not gonna let us down. He's not brought our little boy into this world for him to live with just excessive allergies of every type which left him completely uncomfortable all of the time. You know, the Holy Spirit directed me to a verse that would bring focus and unity, a place where God could command the blessing. When you've so many voices coming at you, some of them professional medical people, some of them friends of family, some of them telling you horror stories that you'd rather not be listening to, um, it makes you very sensitive. But again, in Matthew 18, verse 19, it says, 
If two of you on earth agree, you harmonize together, you make a sweet sound together. You're not hassling and jostling, but you make a sweet sound. If you make a symphony together, it says here in the amplified version, about whatever or anything and everything that they may ask, it will come to pass and be done for them by my Father in heaven. And Jesus is speaking about finding a sweet spot, finding a place where you both have got faith for a, a different picture, faith to see something change, faith to see something ending and a new thing beginning, if that makes sense. And Andrew and I decided, following on from that prophecy, we would just withdraw Gareth from the hospital. We would take him away from the doctor's scrutiny. We would pull away from the steroid cream uh, strategy that they were developing. And one time the doctor gave me something I'll never forget. And I asked him, what's that called? And he, and he said, don't you ask me. Now, I don't feel that that would give you confidence to continue in that path. I am a nurse. I love the, the medical world. I believe in many, many, many tremendous things that they do. But on this occasion, something flipped. And I thought, no, we'd, we'd, we're taking him out from that kind of um, jurisdiction. We're taking him away from that kind of governance. We're pulling him back under our Lord, who is sovereign after all in our lives. We learned the power of agreement. We, we can find that in Psalm 133. It says, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious oil upon the head coming down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard coming down upon the edge of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon coming down upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. That's verses one to three there. We needed something fresh. We needed something that was proclaiming life. We needed something that was breaking down fear. And uh, in those moments when we, we talked about it and prayed about it, we said, yep, he's coming out from the hospital, which actually at the end of the day left me in quite a position of responsibility, being the mom hands-on, having to know how to dress him, what to give him to drink or, or eat. You know, I was feeding him myself and I just completely checked my own diet so that the milk wouldn't trigger anything. It was quite um, a journey, discovery. I remember we had to watch the way we talked about this now because we decided to take them away from their words and their uh, decisions, but we were still in and amongst the church, in and amongst our neighbors. We'd other boys at school, so the school gate was quite a place for conversation. You can't hide your baby. You know, he was bandaged and all you could see was his face. And people would say, how's he getting on? What's happening? And uh, it was quite an experience in front of people. You know, I realized at that point, sometimes we go through challenges in private and sometimes they're public. And it, God gives you the grace if you're in public and if you can't hide this thing that you're experiencing. But the grace of God will meet every need. I can assure you of that. We learned to cover all conversations. I love this. The fact that people said um, all the negative things didn't have to have a bearing on us and especially on him as he grew. I learned not to allow their words to create the future for him or create the picture that we actually didn't want to see and we didn't want him to live underneath the power of those words. It taught me not to take ownership of sickness unless I wanted it to stay. Well, of course, I did not want it to stay. People's words, the doctor's words, could put an identity on. It's like, almost like pinning a label on your chest. And they find, folks find their identity because of the sickness that they've been told they have. I ripped that identity off my son. I didn't want him to carry that tag forever. And God gave me a verse that blessed and helped and strengthened me in this choice that I'd made. It's in Song of Solomon. Verse 4 of chapter 2. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. For love waved as a protecting and comforting banner over my head when I was near him. I just thought the banner over my child's life is not eczema, it's not sickness, it's not fear. It's his banner over me as love. The Lord brought that banner to protect and to comfort, even in those very early days. You know, I had to learn to respond to negative people with a positive comment. Now you can sound a bit pernickety at that point. You can sound a little bit edgy or a bit kind of um, 
I don't know, as if you're resisting their love and their help. But I realized I'm not receiving that. I'm not gonna take ownership of it, of it and I'm not gonna give it power. I realized too that I had to aim for the best long-term answer and not just grab at a quick fix that would get us through the next few weeks. We, we can be offered so many things, folks, and life tries this out on us in every area, whether it's how to relax, how to find love, how to get money, how to go forward in our careers. We go for the quick fix and often it lets us down. And I realized for Gareth, I'm not aiming for any quick fix. I'm thinking of his long-term strength. And I realized and thought through this whole process of steroid creams that sometimes it can ultimately weaken the skin. And I thought in his situation, Father, we need your grace, we need faith for this, but help us to not go down that pathway. You may be following that pathway. God bless you, and I pray it works for you. But I'm just sharing a story here and telling you how, how I found God helped me to, to face this for my son. And it was to, to withdraw him from all of that. I learned another lesson, which was to go to the prayer line as often as necessary. You can feel embarrassed if you go back. You can feel exposed if you're in front of everybody with your child. When there's already been a prophecy, I felt quite exposed, but I knew this is not staying like this. These circumstances are gonna shift. We have got the answer. We just need to discover it and unwrap it. And I went into that prayer line every single time I thought I needed to go. I, I was that desperate, nothing was gonna stop me. I knew I had to keep moving forward. I wasn't gonna give in because of my embarrassment. How dare I? My son was still needing the breakthrough. I went forward anyway and I took him with me. He was still a babe in arms. He was probably about five or six, maybe even seven months old at that time. And we kept going. I realized too, folks, that I needed to keep dipping into the word of God in a very strategic way in a very necessary way. I needed the word of God to keep me up. I wasn't sleeping. I'd got lots of people telling me what to do about this. I had a baby who was never, do you know, he never smiled until he was 10 months. He never smiled at me until he was 10 months old and I'll tell you how that happened. But it was just a long process and I had to keep going forward. And I remember that, that God said to me, come back for another word then. And he showed me, you know, that when we say that the word is like a sword, I realized the enemy's tactics of discouragement would shift and change. And my sword might be in this position, the word he'd given me, the word he'd given me, find unity, um, come into agreement, all of those types of things that he'd already given me. I thought, I need another word now. It wasn't so much that the word had gone blunt or anything, but the enemy's approach had changed. So I needed a new word. And this was the word he gave me because the sword was coming at, uh, the enemy was coming at me from a different angle. I needed my sword to, to shift. And this new scripture God gave me was in Psalm 144, verses 11 and 12. It says, rescue me and deliver me out of the power of hostile alien tribes whose mouths speak deceit and whose right hands are right hands raised in taking fraudulent oaths. When our sons shall be as plants grown large in their youth, and our daughters are sculptured corner pillars, hewn like those of a palace. I wanted my son to grow large and strong. In some translations, it says like, like a tree planted, giving shelter to someone else, not forever in need. Lush and green, bearing fruit, not forever being cocooned in something that wouldn't allow him to move. You know, the bandages, I had a, an experience one day when we had a breakthrough and I could take the bandages off. They'd been so tight and he was beginning to play with a little ball and things like that. He picked the ball up with his knuckles and I was distraught for a while because I thought, what have I done? I've, I've wrapped him up so tight because he had the tendency to pull everything off and go inside. And so I would make sure everything, he would wear tights over the top, if I could describe it in tights up the way so that there was a hole there for him to, to be able to see and eat and everything. And I would cushion him with with vests and everything, but cotton, cotton tights, and he, he couldn't pull them off. But he'd gotten used to hold things with his knuckles, and I panicked because I thought, Lord, what have I done? 
Anyway, within two days, he was just back to normal and playing football and bouncing things about and picking things up with his fingertips. God covered me. But I did worry and I did panic for a second or two that maybe I'd made the wrong choice. I do recall too, realizing that quitting it is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And we needed tremendous tenacity, real strength, real courage. We couldn't just ride through this. We had to seek and search out God's wisdom and God's answer. And in the process of looking at my diet and then when he was on solids, I looked at his diet. We, we didn't go for, is this biscuit okay? It was, can he have wheat? Can he have rice? Can he have barley? Could he have this oil? And, and it was just broken down into ever such tiny bits to try and discover what, what unique ingredient was triggering his problem. I think in some respects, there were many things. It could have been the air, it could have, could have been. We never were told and we would never have even really said it was the antibiotics, but something triggered his problem. But we needed tenacity and we were certainly not gonna quit. I didn't want him to grow up with injections and creams and doctor's appointments for the rest of his life. I didn't want him to grow up with fear when people would say, oh, now then, let me tell you this story. Because you know what? We're not part of that world. When we're born again, God is our sovereign God. I took him to nursery. I'll jump along a little bit. And the headmistress in the nursery school began to cry when I said, this is Gareth, this is the story. I must explain for your information so that you know what to do. And she started to cry and I said, please do not cry on our behalf. We love the Lord, he is sovereign, and we have a higher authority and we are not fearful for him. That's what happened at one point later on in the story. But let me jump back again, because in the process of reading labels, looking for things that would work, I would know within 45 seconds if a new cream would, would help him. And at that point, nothing did, because he would immediately react. And you could see the response straight away. I used to let him play on a huge king-size sheet, because the wool, I thought, of the carpet would trigger some kind of a reaction. But one day, in the process of journeying through holidays and seasons of, of the other boys going to school, I would look at books and I would read and it became apparent that there were certain herbs maybe that would help. And to cut a, cut a really long story short, God gave me a recipe and I made a cream and I had to cook it up on the stove and there I was making this stuff that looked like gunk, I must say, complete gunk. But I put, put a little spot on his uh, hand and I thought, nothing's happened. Nothing, nothing's happened and that was quite unique because everything always happened. And that night I remember putting like a little smear on his foot and it just went white. And then I put the cream on his whole foot and his little foot was pale and soft and cool and the rest of his body was angry and red and sore. So, you know, I thought, Lord, this is gonna see us through a season. And I used that for a good while until one day, can you believe this one day? God said, stop it now. And I kind of took a, a double take. Stop it now. Lord, that's been helping us. Stop it now. And I realized that for all I'd had to endeavor to find an answer, I'd labored with that answer for months. I'd been out to make this stuff and I'd frozen it because we were heading into winter time and all of those different things that you can quickly forget. I realized I needed to trust the God of the miracle and not the miracle. And when he said, stop it now, I had to stop it now. I remember that morning thinking, Lord, well, I'll just leave it there before I kind of finish cooking this stuff because I had a big pot full of it again, ready to sieve and, and strain and all of those different things. And I remember saying to God, I'll check with Andrew when he gets back. <laughs> that was my safety net. Anyway, Andrew just quickly said, if that's what the Lord's told you to do, so then that's what you do. Because, you know, God had given me another scripture. I want to find this for you. It says, he who is loose and slack in his work is brother to him who is a destroyer. And he who does not use his endeavors to heal himself is brother to him who commits suicide. That's Proverbs 18, verse 9 in the Amplified. God had been so straight with us to find an answer for Gareth. God had been so strong with us to not give up. He didn't need medication. And now after we finished with the cream, he didn't need any more cream. 
Today I find that he's working and playing with our pet dog. Talked to you about that in a previous program. We have a chocolate lab who's just the love of our lives. She's just a lot of fun. Gareth can play with a dog. We live in an old farmhouse out in the countryside with all the different crops in and around the place. He works with wood and he's making furniture using resins and varnishes and oils. There's dust everywhere. I mean, seriously, there's dust everywhere because he's forever sawing and, and uh, polishing and rubbing things down. He makes cabinets and things like this. He wears what he likes to wear. He's in his denims one minute and then he's in a swish jacket the next. He's really cool. He likes at the moment wearing aftershave. He's in his 20s. He's got his favorite kind of brand of aftershave. God is so kind. He lifted us up out from the most difficult situation. You know, I've heard a story of a girl whose beginnings were the double of Gareth's. She was reacting to everything. And she now, when I read the story, was having 100 injections a day only able to eat one kind of cereal and was living in a sterile bubble. I thank God he just gave us the courage to step out. It wasn't easy. I cried through bitter tears often at night with tears of sadness, tears of tiredness, tears of absolute exasperation. But God brought us through and you may be facing a sickness in your life. You may be facing an ongoing challenge that's making you very uncomfortable. If, if you're willing, I would love to pray with you. We can't enforce our decisions on other people. We have to go to God for faith for those for ourselves. But I just would love to pray for you if, if you're willing. Father, I promise that your word is true to these folks, that they can rely upon your word. I thank you, Father, that you know the situation. You know the pain that they feel, the struggle that they have, the voices that come. And I pray, Lord, above all of those things, that they'll stay in tune with your guidance and with your instruction. They'll seek your wisdom, Lord. They'll seek your answer. I pray, Father, you'll give them boldness to resist the enemy's lies when they're told there's nothing else we can do. I pray you'll help them to conquer and not just cope. In Jesus' name, I plead the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus that your grace will make mountains move, miracles become real, and that they will be healed for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. My name is Sue. I'm from Destiny Church, and it's been wonderful to talk to you today. God bless you. Thank you.